a vast body of water. But what seems so nice on the surface can seem different under the water. Many invasive and also scary creatures lurk under the water. Let's take a look at them, shall we? The carp. This fish was placed in the Great Lakes because at the time it was a very valued food source. Now, not as much. But since they are the literal magic carps of the fish kingdom, they can survive very harsh <laughs> environments, making it difficult to restrain and contain them. Uh, eh, no! This is about fish that invaded the lake. It's not about fish that invaded your heart. There's a reason this gigantic bundle of scaly, disgusting sliminates exists in the creeks. If you didn't know that, you probably don't n live near a creek anyway. Continuing, the reason the salmon that were shown earlier were brought into the lake was to deal with the airlife invasive population, which essentially consisted of making them their dinner. And they came in massive numbers. And it was successful. However, now you have a predatory fish, not where it's supposed to be, and out of food. So, what does it go after? Well, the native species, of course, which is an entirely new can of worms. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop now. Now, let me introduce you to the fish of your nightmares. The lamprey. And before you ask, no, this isn't fake, this is all real. Scientifically known as petro no, petro what, no, what the heck? petromon that's correct. Scientifically known as this, this is not a species of creature you want to encounter in the water. A species that has survived a few mass extinctions, the lamprey, while thankfully not in the creeks leading to Lake Ontario, was able to enter Lake Ontario via the St. Lawrence River thanks to its, en its enlargement by us in order to get more stuff. The feeding habits of this creature are, are as you'd expect. First, it latches onto the side of the large prey using suction from their cup-shaped mouths, and they twist their body so that their curved teeth can lock in the fish's flesh. Finally, it will use its toothed tongue to rasp and grind away at the victim's flesh to consume bodily fluids such as blood. When it's done, it will leave a mark on the victim's body, which generally means that the victim will be more vulnerable to attacks. Thankfully, however, if you were to have one latch on, it has been seen removing itself because you are warm-blooded. Compared to the cold-blooded fish it is used to feeding on, still it doesn't mean you should be sticking your hands in a tank full of these parasites. Thank you for watching this video and getting your daily dose of unnecessary fear of the ocean. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.